Y'all ready? Yeah. 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 Come on. Wow, wow, wow! Look at all these beautiful people tonight! Woo! Woo! Thanks, everyone, for being here, especially my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time she went to Pasadena, so very excited. It's like going to France for her. Um, I do want to thank everybody who's listened to the show, either season one or the new season. It's just it's such an honor to get to tell stories from my community. Well, who are you? Oh, I'm your host, Eric Galindo. I am a co-host and co-creator of Wild Season 2. Burr, burr, burr. Burr, burr, burr. And I am Megan Tan, also co-host and co-creator. Thank and you. we have some questions for y'all. Make some noise if you've ever been in love. Make some noise if you've ever been in a toxic relationship. Make some noise if you didn't know you were in love and in a toxic relationship. <laughs> well, that is what Wild Season 2 is all about. As y'all know, it is a fictionalized story inspired by Eric's life. And Eric, you want to give a little backstory? I love backstories. Yeah, you know, I think uh, for a long time I wanted to tell a love story uh, about people from Southeast L.A. You know, one of the things I think is that it's we rarely get to see ourselves in rom-coms. And so I really wanted to make a rom-com for us. And also, I kind of feel like the podcast medium is a place where you can um, tell a story to someone in a way where it feels so intimate that they can like suspend disbelief. Mm. Like I take it back to like the days of like the Greeks and plays where you would just go up and people would perform and they'd be like, no set, nothing. They're just talking. There's a chorus. They're telling you what the story's about, all that. And I just felt like we could do that with podcasts and really maybe do something special. And I think that's what we did. That is what we did. Uh, and one of the things we also did Make, making a fictionalized story is extremely hard because it's really easy to hear when people are lying just yes. with their voice. That's true. <laughs> so when Eric came to me and was like, let's do fiction, I was like, mm, yeah, she did let not me like, get back to you on yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but then we hired some incredible actors. One of them you're going to meet tonight. And we had um, an incredible sound design team who literally went out into the world collected all these sounds. So when you listen to the show and you hear someone driving, that was someone actually driving and someone actually recording them driving. Or someone actually falling into water. That guy. That <laughs> My nephew pushed me in. Yeah, that's right. He's here too. <laughs> he is here too. Yeah. Um, and also, I guess one of the things is that, you know, your brain kind of works in this way where you're constantly seeing yourself as like a TV show, right? Like sometimes you would come to me and be like, sometimes this feels like a rom-com, right? Yeah, I think that I grew up and I, I used television and I used film to cope, I think, with like when life got tough, when, when things weren't exactly ideal. And, and it, it kind of messes with you when, when what, like the thing you use to cope kind of erases you. Like, you know, television and film has erased my community for such a long time. It's definitely changing, and, it, and, and that's a big, broad statement. But it was weird to be like, oh, man, TV is so nice because we're not there, you know? It, like, it really messes with you. But I do think it became the, my, like, lens of how I see the world. Like, if this is a TV show, if this is a movie, what is it? Hopefully you want to be in a rom-com, you know? You don't want to be in, like, The Sopranos. Um, <laughs> And so that's why we have an incredible show for you tonight. We're going to be talking about the state of the romantic comedy genre with two incredibly talented people. So let's go! Yeah. Help me welcome to the stage an actress, philanthropist, producer, 
activist and a champion of the arts. She is known for her role as Valencia Perez in the critically acclaimed comedy Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. She is also a Broadway star. We are blessed. Uh, And her most recent project is a podcast called What Are Friends For? She also plays the role of Mama Angela in Wild Season 2. The team knows her as the woman who makes us cry whenever she sings. Put your hands together for Miss Gabrielle Ruiz. Hello, just for the podcast moment, like, I just want everyone to know in the audience right now has sparkly headbands. So just everyone that's listening right now, please envision that because you guys look amazing. (laughs) Hi, guys. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, I'd like to also welcome our next guest, who is the host of Intuit the podcast from Vulture that breaks down the culture and entertainment stories we can't stop thinking about. He's also hosted the podcast Vibe Check from Stitcher. Previously, he was an NPR correspondent and the host of the award-winning radio program and podcast, It's Been a Minute with Sam Sanders. Put your hands together for Mr. Sam Sanders. Good to be back here. Good to be back. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you guys so much. Wild will be back after this break. Now, back to the show. So, rom coms, the state of them. Do we love them? Do we hate them? Um, before we get into it, we want to ask you. What are your favorite rom-coms? Gabrielle? Oh, me first. Sure. Um, I mean, can I make one up? Sure. That sure. would be my favorite. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Let, because, yeah. Yes. <laughs> because one that I do love, though, that I firmly believe is a rom-com is Bridesmaids. Mm. Oh, I yeah. really believe the rom-com of the friendship is very, very um, just strong in that movie. And I just love the, their, their platonic love for each other and their growth and their struggle and their breakup. It's hilarious. But one that I would make up because Eric, you mentioning like la cultura, you know, like us, you know, I have always been so daydreamy about the scenario of Selena Quintanilla, badass, may she rest in peace. And her husband, Chris, in the movie, Selena, when they're talking about the farm that they want to have, you know, and like the chickens and the cows and they get so giggly Mm -hmm. and they're like, but we want to have kids. Okay, let's go make some. And they go like, you know, they, he picks, scoops her up into the house. Like, could you imagine when he scoops her up into the house, the scene opens to like a sitcom of that family? Mm -hmm. I would love that. I want you to be Selena. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I'll be the mom. Thank you. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Yeah. I can see that for sure. What, what about that. you, Sam? I have one favorite, and it's always been my favorite. So growing up, my mother and I would just watch a bunch of TV together. Like my dad was off watching sports, and my mom was like, I want to watch Lifetime movies? And it's like, hell yeah. <laughs> but yes. there were only two movies in my entire life that I've seen make her cry. Mm. One was Brokeback Mountain, but that was sad. And the other was My Best Friend's Wedding. And I think my mother and I watched that film together at least seven or eight times. Oh, my gosh. It has everything. <laughs> it's got Julia Roberts, the greatest movie star to ever live. <laughs> it's got a Dionne Warwick song, Say a Little Prayer for You. Say a little prayer for you. It's got Rupert Everett being cute and gay on screen in the 90s, which was barely allowed. Yes. Um, it's always my favorite. Always. When would she start tearing up? Just at the end, she's always like, you. well, Julia Roberts should have got her. And then she'd cry. <laughs> and oh, I was and, like, I agree. And Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz, yes. I was about to say. Like she's yeah, singing Latina. horribly oh and God. crying. I'm so So that funny. film, <laughs> God, it's perfect. I mean, it's not perfect because when you think about it, all the old rom-coms are horribly toxic. Mm, that's like true. the behavior that they allowed, you're like, you can't do that. Like well, Julia Roberts was stalking that man. Oh, the ageism too. Oh, yeah, just like yeah. how young and like, they're yeah. like, our life is over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so that brings us to the next question, which is, do rom-coms actually teach us anything? They about? teach us the wrong things. <laughs> what about love? The wrong things about love. Okay, explain. Most of the behavior that the person trying to get the other person exhibits during the movie is almost illegal. 
If not, <laughs> and at the end, their love is only affirmed if they prove it to other people. Mm. Mm. That's it's true. always a wedding. It's Yikes. always a big to-do in front of other people. Right, this external. What if you found love by not breaking the law and it was just for you and your partner? <laughs> what about that? That said, I'll watch any and every rom-com. Right? <laughs> They're fun. <laughs> They're entertaining, right? Like, Gabrielle, you were on a show that was kind of mm-hmm. like a Very rom-com. Very rom-com-y. Yeah. And toxic and crazy. Yeah. I mean, Literally the title crazy is Crazy the Ex-Girlfriend. Yeah. Yes. I, yes. Think, I mean, I watched that show thinking like, finally, they get us. Um, you know, cause it was like groundbreaking. Yeah. It, it challenges all of the kind of rom-com tropes. It does. It and, really did. And for those of you who haven't seen it, there's this incredible character arc with Valencia, who Gabrielle plays. She starts the show waiting for a man to propose to her. And then by the end of the series, she proposes to a woman. She does. And so she found that power. And I loved that for her. It was such an honor to be, have, be a part of that arc. For this character that for the show being such a musically oriented show, there were so many um, hallucination style musical moments. And um, for Valencia's story, especially with her coming out story, there was no song and dance about it. And I Mm. loved that for her. Yeah. What what did you learn about love through understanding that character though or not about love or that it's you know you have a lot of power you have a lot Mm -hmm. of power in your narrative you Mm -hmm. um there can be a moment I think everyone goes through when they realize that they have a choice to um not be the victim of their circumstances and she um surrounded herself with people that believed in her and that were able to show her that and that part of her. And she's like, I can propose to you. And so she does the whole moment exactly the way she wants to with the yeah. drone and the video and the, you know, the, the live streaming and everything. And That was the perfect proposal. It was exactly what I wanted. A moment just for us. Is that a drone outside the window? Of course it's a drone. What are we doing? So extra. She, so <laughs> extra. But it was gorgeous. I remember and loving this her. show and watching it. And I loved how much your character grew over the course of the show. Because yeah. at the start, you're like, should I take this character seriously? And then it's like, oh, you definitely <laughs> should. And there's these layers in this depth yes. of your character that, I don't know. I just, I love that show. Oh, I love you in you. it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I also love that show. I, th- I thought it showed a part of, of L.A. that... You didn't get to see on TV. West, West Covina. Covina. West Covina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Covina. Also, it, was like, it was like West Covina, but there's like people of color, there's Latinos, there's Asians, yes. there's people from all walks. Nipsey Hussle yeah. like yes. makes a cameo, yeah. does yes. a song, and then realizes Happy. he's been toxic to women and then goes on apologizes. Like- Denise, I'm sorry that I showered you a crystal. I didn't even ask if you like champagne. You probably messed up your blowout. Ashley, I realize now that it wasn't right for me to tell you what to do with that big fat butt. <laughs> Have you seen the video where Rachel Bloom goes to the West Covina City Council? Because they have like a, they the declare a day the for the show. The show. Mm-hmm. So the creator of the show, star of the show, she goes to like West Covina City Council to accept like a, a plaque or something. And then the city council sings one of the songs from the show with her. Oh no, I haven't oh seen that. God. It was cringe, but beautiful. <laughs> Describe the that way show. It should be. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. That yes. is that show. Sounds yeah. like love. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, this, uh-huh. this brings me to my next question, Sam. Like one of the reasons I wanted to make a rom com um, is because, like, like you said, I love rom coms. They never love me back. You yeah. know, they haven't shown people from my community a lot of love. Not just rom coms, but like pop culture. Period. And I still love pop culture. And yeah. you get to talk to people on your show all the time that are redefining pop culture. Joe Kim Booster, Charlie Ralph. Yeah. Yourself, you do it all the time. Okay. But like, how do you balance the fact that it's so hard to see our see our stories up there, but we love it anyway? Yeah. I mean, I think it's like it's actually not as hard as we're sometimes told it is. Mm. Like when you peel back any of the layers and the numbers about who's watching what and what the future of viewing is. Um by all metrics, the most important viewers are Latinos and black people. Latinos are the most prized commodity in the streaming wars. They right. over-index for TV viewership and they're more loyal than white viewers. They over-index for movie um, attendance. So that's it, right? And so it's like, once you know that, why would you let anyone say, well, not your story? 
It's like, actually, no. Actually, no. Right. And so I think that, like, for me, the challenge is not accepting the narrative about scarcity and hardship in this streaming economy and landscape, but saying, who's actually watching this stuff? And, like, if that's your guide, then it feels easier. Also, I think there's this thing where it's like, we, we still don't believe that, like, white people can watch people on screen who are not white. Right. I watched Friends. No, exactly. Twice. Although Joey's Mexican. I, I don't care what they say. Yes. Yeah. Well, and then it's like, also, it's like, when you look at these shows that are coded as black or coded as brown, as long as it was on the air, Blackish's audience was majority white. That's true. And so we have to let go of a lot of these fallacies that mm. we're told yeah. and understand that, like, people like good story. Right. You know mm. this. I mean, exactly, like, people yeah. like good story. It's well true. said. Yeah, very well said. All right. So I think we're a, now that we set the mood, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a little bit of fun, right? I'm already right having that? fun. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I know. We're going to have a little bit of uh, fun with the audience, though. Okay. Oh, we're, yes. Yeah. We're going to ask for a volunteer, two volunteers to come and play a trivia rom-com game with Sam and Gabrielle. Do we have any volunteers? Yeah. Can I'm we get two volunteers from the audience? I'm oh, we have people laser pointing. focus on yeah. someone. Wow. Yeah. Well, oh. Wild will be back after this break. Now, back to the show. Hi. You guys yes, want to yes. go ahead and introduce yourselves? My name is Erica. Yes. Hi. Hi. Girl, have a seat. And what's your name? I'm Cynthia. Cynthia. Oh, nice. Hi, Cynthia. Erica and Cynthia. Hello. Right. Hello. Yeah, I love those names. <laughs> Very, very close to my heart. Okay, Eric and Cynthia, there are whiteboards behind you, uh, and there should be markers and erasers. High tech. <laughs> the way it's going to work is there's going to be a question shown on the screen with multiple choice answers. You will have about 15 seconds to write your answer down. And then Rebecca is it, going yeah. to she, keep score. Rebecca in the back, our producer, is keeping score. Thank goodness somebody is. Okay, great. Yes, yes. Because the score really matters. I have not emphasized <laughs> how much it matters who wins this game. <laughs> it matters so much. All right. All, All right. right. So question number one. What song... Oh. Does Patrick Verona serenade Cat with in 10 Things I Hate About You? A, don't you, you forget about, about me. B, they're already finished. No. I got a whole bit. I practiced this. All right. I mean, I thought it was like a speed round, you know? <laughs> the answer was B. Can't take my eyes off of you. How about this? How about this? More points for this. I love you, baby. <laughs> baby. And if it's what I'm all right, I need you, baby. Through all the lonely nights. Okay. Great, great. She's a professional singer. She's going to be doing that, people. Don't feel the pressure to it. perform with her. She's I love the speed us. round. This yeah. is great. All right. All right. Next, next question. Next speed round. Okay. Finish the quote from Love, actually. Most toxic rom-com ever. Oh. You ever watch that again? Ugh. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. To me, you are dot dot dot. All right. I don't. I forgot. I'm literally playing. Honestly, because it's such a basic line. It's not. I epic. blocked that it's film like, out. To me, you are perfect. <laughs> Everyone in that film is acting horribly. And he's literally holding it a is, sign. To me, you are perfect. perfect. Yeah. Oh. Visual memory. I've never seen wow. That. Also, don't come to my house with signs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty creeper. When I just got married. That's true. It is a wild. It's, it's, it's it, not, is, it doesn't hold up. And yeah. I'm right. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> uh, all right. From which Jane Austen novel did Fire Island draw inspiration? Is it multiple choice? No, no, no multiple, multiple choice. choice. Can I buy an audience <laughs> member? Wow. Can I phone call a friend? <laughs> From which Jane Austen novel did Fire Island? Just draw look around. <laughs> yeah. oh. And the answer is. Yeah, sure. Okay, you guys can have it. It's Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice. Pride and prejudice. Thank you. Yay. Okay, Megan, you want to read the next question? Sure, sure, sure. At the beginning of Sleepless in Seattle, oh Tom Hanks moves to Seattle from what city? Oh. A, Chicago. Chicago. B, B Miami, Miami. C, Boston. D, Los Angeles. 
I've never seen this entire movie. I will say, here are some, here, like, I got this wrong because I thought I was going to guess the whitest city just because <laughs> that made the most sense, but I was wrong. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. So don't do that. <laughs> oh, I was going to say Boston. That's what I said, too. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Sam is right. Uh, oh. And, Who's right? And, and, and Gabrielle. And Gabrielle. Hey, Chicago. Yay. Chicago. That's right. I don't remember that at the all from the movie. Keep I don't, the I don't score, think it was right? a big plot point. All right. So I'm going to read this line, and you guys got to guess what rom-com is it from, okay? It's oh. choose me. Marry me. Let oh. me make you happy. Is it from Four Weddings and a Funeral, 27 Dresses, okay. Runaway Bride, or My Best or Friend's is Wedding? Is it not? I get my Julia Roberts rom-coms mixed up. Is it not? I, we're going to see. <laughs> the answer was D, my best friend's wedding. Yeah, it's my best oh, friend's wedding. So lucky I'm okay. your friend. I just think that's how bad I am. So lucky. You. I was like, dude, Dearly. you should know this. I know. Director M. Night Shyamalan is said to have ghostwritten the script of what rom-com? A, never been kissed. B, she's all that. C, American Pie, or D, as good as it gets. Sorry. Only one of these movies has people of color in it. That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's all that. Yeah. 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 Shout out to Freddie Prince, Cisco. That's my boo. Yes. Freddie. All, all right. Whose mother okay. says the iconic line, I'll have what she's having and when Harry met Sally? Oh, the mother? The, yeah, whose mother? mom? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some time to think, Gabriel. It's close, but but as the director, who's the director? The answer is D. Rob Reiner. Rob Reiner is a, oh Rob Reiner. He's the director, and it was his mom. I definitely seen that. He's directing <laughs> this scene. Yeah, I, um, my mom's here. It's hard enough for me to say any like bad words, but I can't imagine doing like a sex scene at a diner directing where your mom's one of the actresses. <laughs> wild. Shout that, out to Rob. Now Reiner. that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What's the highest grossing rom com of I all know time? This, and I can tell you the gross. Is it Knocked Up? <laughs> is it When Harry Met Sally? No cheating. Or is Gabrielle. it My Big Fat Greek Wedding? Two hundred thirty-eight million no. dollars. You know this answer? Yep. The wow. number? Oh yeah, baby. Oh man. Yeah, <laughs> correct. My big fat Greek wedding. That's Woo! awesome. I didn't know that. <laughs> Googling my big fat Greek wedding's domestic gross. Yeah, I, oh, that was so, so off. Yeah. What is it? What is I want to say, and it might be uh, okay. It gross two forty one point four million in North America. That's only awesome. off by three million. Global box office was three hundred sixty eight point seven million. Oh wow. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that <laughs> That is our game for tonight. Yes, all right. Be Rebecca, Rebecca. Who, who won? Cynthia. Cynthia. Good job. Right. Thank you, thank you, Cynthia and Erica, for playing. What does Cynthia win? They're both going to get swag bags. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Because participation is also winning. And I, I had the honor of having Gabriella cheat, cheat off me. <laughs> That's you are right. no. It's like you no, know. Just shared shameless. answers. Yes, yes. Shameless. Shared answers. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll thank keep that forever. Much. Another round of applause for Woo! our volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and now we're going to have a segment that we call the sixty-second love story. Yeah, so we have a buzzer a and a buzzer. timer. And it sounds like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a big red button for those of you at home. It's Gabrielle. Oh, I'm, I'm going to start with you. Oh, mm -hmm. man. In, okay. In, in our show, seconds. there's a psychic. We see a psychic. They were no help. Oh, right. But I understand you have a, sh a story involving a psychic, too. Yes. Are you going to start timing me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so ready? <laughs> and go. So I was in the middle of a relationship and like I was broken up and I'm um, doing a show in Agunquit, Maine. And I told the guy that was making the hot dogs, I was like, thank you for the hot dogs. He's like, you're welcome. When's your birthday? And I said, well, December 12th. He's like, great. Well, I'm a medium and God has a message for you. Do you want to hear it? I said, yes, of course. He's like, great. You're really bad at picking your men. <laughs> I got 20 seconds. And I said, okay. And then he said, so here's these things you need to do. You need to get like, do have someone find the person for you. You also are probably going to be a mentor for a lot of your life and also ask them, what do you want from me? 
Um, and then I was crying the whole time. And then um, he was like, the person that you find is going to lift you up, which we all hope for. Okay, sure. But the bad picking your men was like the most, the biggest part possible. And found Philip, my husband, on Match.com. Whoa! You didn't have to pay for any of that. And, and, and as you were getting a hot dog? <laughs> yes, I yes. It was a hamburger, but I, I, I was nervous. I, yeah. I freaked right. out. I it was actually a burger. Story. I love that story. Okay. Yeah, I think Sam has like a similar story, but not with I have that. like a... Well, my favorite love story is the story of my worst date. Yes. Okay. Because uh, it's on. funny. You got to talk faster just so you know. Ready, I know, I know. set, go. Met this guy on Tinder. I could tell he was a loser from the first swipe, but I'm like, okay, let's go. So he's like, let's do dinner. I know this really great Mexican restaurant. I'm like, cool, love Mexican food. He's like, come to my house first for drinks. And I'm like, no, 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 no. He's persistent. I say, okay, I have my mace in my pocket. I enter his house, purple light, large white leather sectional, big cocaine energy. Not good. He pours the strongest vodka soda known to man and begins to chain smoke out of his window while telling me he and his ex broke up because they got caught running drugs across the northern border. (laughs) We then go to dinner. He's already drunk. He says, I know the owners of the restaurant. They love me. I order in Spanish. We get there. They don't know him. His Spanish is horrible. I'm finishing the story. (laughs) Spanish is horrible. Keeps drinking. He's just sloshed. So I'm like, how do I get out of this situation? So I just eat, try to be nice. We leave. He can't really walk straight, but he's still trying to spit game to me. And I'm like, my dude, my dude, my dude. And so I'm like, I have to get him to his front door. So as I'm walking him to his front door, which is up some steps in his building, he leans in for a kiss. How dare. And I said, no. I said, one, you're really drunk. And two, your nose keeps running. What's up with that? And he goes, well, when I drink a lot, I get post-nasal drip. And then he leans in again. <laughs> so I just summon my strength, get him up his stairs to his front door. And I said, oh, you wow. go inside your house, drink a bunch of water and take two ibuprofens, maybe order some McDonald's. You need something. And after all of this, he invites me in. A fool. I leave. Worst state of my life. Oh, wow. That's it. Great story. Wow. <laughs> He was Longer fortunate. than a minute. He was yeah. fortunate to have you. Like, yeah, make you sure he was him. okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. If you're listening, you sir, advice. fix your life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That did not happen. <laughs> Is that the show? Oh, my That's God. <laughs> We're done. We get to eat tacos. Look. I'm tired of arguing with you. All this makeup and breakup. Thanks to Gabrielle Ruiz and Sam Sanders for joining us on this episode of Wild. Don't forget to like and follow Wild Season 2, I Think I'm Falling in Love, wherever you get your podcast. Eric and I created, wrote, and co-hosted Wild together this season. This show is produced by Anjali Sastry Kerbacek, Emma Alabaster, Kyle Chang, and our engineer is Donald Boz. Yeah, yeah, give it up for them. And special thanks to the live events team at LAist, including Rebecca Stummy and Tony Federico for producing this episode. Also thanks to Kristen Payne, Kristen Ranger, Clark Crane, and John Cohn. Wild is a production of LAist Studios. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live. And they are not wrong. It really does. Thank you for listening. Let's go eat. Yes. Now why you playing the fiddle? Fiddle, throwing up the middle. I see you playing games. I can read you like a Kindle. I ain't losing no sleep. Giving brain to my pillow. You insane? I'm for real though. For real though. This program is made possible in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting a private corporation funded by the American people.